Hi, my name's Ryan, one of the engineers working for Matchmaster Communications. Uh, right now I'm about to show you how to program the uh, digital modulator combination of cards for a Terra head end. Um, okay, so let's jump right in. On the screen here you can see the three cards that make up uh, the Terra digital modulator. We've got an MD330. What it does is converts three analog AV feeds into three separate MPEG-2 streams. Uh, we have two of those cards, that'll give us a total of six streams. And what happens is those six streams, once they're converted to MPEG-2, are fed straight into the TRX-360 via the little ribbon cables. Uh, those six MPEG streams are multiplexed together into one transport stream and then modulated uh, into a DVB-T output. So let's jump right in and um, have a look at one of the MD-330s, the MPEG encoder. Okay, first of all... There are three sections obviously, section 1 which is the first MPEG encoder, section 2, second MPEG encoder, and section 3. They are all um, have exactly the same settings, but what you can do is you can configure each one independently. If you know that one's going to have fast moving action on it and you need to give it a higher bit rate, you can do that. Or maybe you know one of the streams is only going to be audio, so you could set it to um, an audio only stream. So, to start with, uh, this is the simple menu mode, so it only gives you a handful of options, but in most situations uh, you won't need to go beyond this. So, um, okay, let's just go explain these different sections here. We've got the section number, so enable or disable, just leave that on enabled. Same with encoding, leave that on on. Uh, the BR mode, this is the bitrate mode, so VBR stands for variable bitrate, so the bitrate will change dynamically based on um, the stream that's being fed into it, the service that's being fed into it. So um, if it's a fast moving, moving action scene it might use up to you know, 4 or 5 megabits per second uh, where if it's a slow moving scene it might only use 1 or 2. So uh, the variable bit rate <coughs> uh, basically allows it to just uh, dynamically allocate whatever bit rate's required uh, up to a maximum number and that's what this number here is, the bit rate, this is the maximum value that it can, that it can, uh, that it can use. So I usually set these for, oh, sorry, usually set these for 4.5 megabits per second. Uh, I usually set the uh, the video ratio, the aspect ratio to 16 by 9 or widescreen. Uh, the audio level, you can make this louder or quieter based on whatever you feed it into it and uh, apply changes. Now, like I said, there is also the option to do um, some more tricky things in the advanced menu. If we go to advanced, uh, it'll open up a few more options for us. Most of the things in here you probably don't want to change just because uh, the module itself takes care of it, so all, a lot of this digital information here just leave as it is. Um, same with the video saturation, unless you want to do any sort of tweaking or correcting to the video. Same with the, um, the data rate <coughs> for the audio. Uh, you can change the audio mode. Uh, you could also, here's where you can change whether it's just pure audio or video and audio, so you may wish to play with that if you want to, but usually I just leave it on simple. This is for just standard audio video stuff. Okay, so section 1 you can see now is a 4.5 megabit maximum bandwidth and a widescreen aspect ratio. Beyond a section 2 you can do the same sort of thing. Um, for the, so you can see at the moment it's got its default values of 3.5 and uh, 4x3. So for the, um, for the benefit of time I won't go through and program these, these uh, extra cards as they are there. They're fine just for, for test purposes. Same with the, um, the secondary MD330. You could go through each section of these. So this would be the, the fourth stream, the fifth stream and the sixth stream. And uh, they're all on. Yep, so they should all be on and uh, being fed into the digital modulator. So now let's move on to the TRX360. This is the uh, digital multiplexer and um, Kofta modulator. Now at the moment you can see these are your six streams being fed into it. We have uh, one, two, three, four, five, six. They're all operating basically at full bandwidth at the moment. Um, and you can see the, the bandwidth jumping around a bit, but they won't exceed the maximum bandwidth that they've, or if they do, they won't exceed it by much anyway. I saw a 3.6 just for a second there. But uh, generally they won't exceed the 4.5 or 3.5 megabits per second that's been uh, allocated to it. 
Over here on the right you can see a quick summary. Uh, you can see the maximum bitrate available to us is just under 32 megabits per second. And at the moment the current bitrate is just, it's basically nothing. And the reason that is is because although these six streams are being fed into it, they haven't been activated, they haven't been um, connected through to the multiplexer yet. Um, so they're not part of the, uh, the output stream. So what we're going to do is we'll just set that now. So these tabs at the top, transport stream 1 through to 6, this is where we load the individual streams from each um, each of the MPEG encoders. So just click on <coughs> click on load parameters. So here we go. It's found uh, it's found the stream. First thing we want to do is click on enable to enable the service. What what clicking enable does is basically just connect it through to the multiplexer. So as soon as you click on that, so service is updated. That that particular service is now being fed through to the output. Now one of the biggest um, advantages of this system is you get to create your own channel name. So let's call this one AV1. You can also give it a provider name. So let's go Matchmaster TV and update the program information. <coughs> so generally the um, so there you go, it's saved. Go to transport two and load the streams. Now generally when um, a set-top box changes channel <coughs> the information that it displays is sort of dependent from TV to TV and set-top box to set-top box. So um, basically all TVs will show the channel name but not all TVs or set-top boxes will display the provider name. So uh, it is important that you set the program name here. Let's call this one AV2. Uh, this field here though, the provider name, isn't that critical. You could leave that blank if you weren't particularly fussed on putting a provider name. Okay, there you go, it's enabled and the information's been stored. Now you don't have to um, use all six streams, say you only want four or five streams, then the streams you don't want, don't use, you just uh, don't, don't click enable basically. So what we want to do is just go to transport stream five, Load the streams. And once that's done, we'll enable this one. There we go, it's enabled. And let's just call it something else. Call it, I don't know, camera feed. Okay, so now I've updated the information and enabled the, enabled the streams for Transport Stream 1, Transport Stream 2, and Transport Stream 5. So, if I go to OFDM Output, just to double check, you'll see there are our, four, our three streams, Transport Stream 1, 2, and 5. Uh, so three streams are enabled so far of the total of six. And if we go back to the Home channel, or the Home panel, we'll now see that the bandwidth is now up to 11 megabits per second. <coughs> So uh, if we, as we enable additional channels, this will obviously go up, um, uh, up to our maximum limit. So this maximum bitrate, <coughs> this number here is basically um, determined uh, by the OFDM parameters, what we set in here. So we'll go into here next. Okay, so the default settings for this module is basically to, to give you the maximum available bandwidth, um, oh sorry, bitrate. Gram64 has the highest um, you know, bits per symbol, uh, along with the you know eight megahertz, the garden of all, the garden of all set quite low. Uh, same with the code rate. Uh, so this combination of parameters gives you just under 32 megabits per second. Uh, we might as well leave it on QAM64 because that's what all the broadcasters use. So uh, there's no problem with sticking on that. Uh, in Australia, we use seven megahertz bandwidth, so best to change that to seven meg, or else you might get some conflicts. Um, Garden of all. The garden of all is basically there just to protect from any echoes you get, any multi-pathing issues. So um, because this is normally the normally the case is that we're we're uh, putting a system like this into a, um, a closed cable system, so you won't have any echoes. So we don't have to worry about that. So we can leave the uh, the garden of all on one on 32. That basically means that um, only a very small portion of the signal is left for blanking, so that the uh, echoes can be re uh, rejected. Uh, or not rejected, recognized, I guess. Uh, the code rate is something you can play with. Um, at seven on eights, it means that only one eighth of the uh, the bent of the data rate being um, broadcast is error correction. So this is the ability to co go from 
pre-BER to post-BER the ability to correct any bit errors that are, that are being received. So you could put that to, uh, depend on, on the, the strength of your, uh, on the, um, the quality of your network, you could leave that on 7 and 8 if you're feeling, if you're feeling um, that you've got a good system that you're putting, putting your signal into. If you're in an older system, a retrofitted system with a old airspace cable or something like that, you may wish to um, reduce your code rate to 3 on 4 just so that if there are any bit errors being introduced then this, the uh, set-top box has a good chance of regenerating them. Uh, okay, so once you've finished that, click on update. Now you'll see if we go back to home, we've uh, reduced the code rate, the bandwidth, so the bit rate has now dropped to um, just under 34 mega, uh, 24 megabits per second. But you'll see <coughs> that even even though we've done that, uh, we've still got plenty of headroom because we've only obviously enabled the three tra three um, three services. Uh, as a general rule of thumb, you don't want to exceed, say. 80 to 85 percent of your used bandwidth because there is always the possibility that you will get um, situations where all your channels are, are, are using high bandwidth and you don't want to um, run into sort of any sort of errors. And the sort of error you might see, we can simulate now if you go if you use too much bandwidth. If I change this to QPSK, which um, is a very limited in the uh, limits the total ama amount of bandwidth available. Oh, sorry, bit rate available. I go back to home now. Yeah, see the maximum available bit rate is now only eight megabits per second, and we've got an error because the the, the multiplexer has a bit rate overflow error. So just be just be aware that you don't um, put your modulator in a situation where uh, it runs out of uh, of a bit rate. Let's double check that's back to where it was before. Yep, there we go. So all good. Right back to OFDM parameters. Obviously, we want to turn the RF on. Saw filter enable that. RF frequency. Let's just, for the sake of this test, just put it on channel six. And that's it. You can put an offset on there if you want, and you can also attenuate the channel if you want to, um, you know, balance things out with other cards that may be in your head end or other services. Uh, but that's about it for this screen. Now move on to the OFDM output. <coughs> now this is the final bit of uh, tweaking you need to do. Uh, it's worth noting that one of the biggest uh, advantages of this head end is the fact that you can program logical channel numbers. Now this is the number that your set-top box display, your set-top box or TV displays when you change channel. Uh, as I said before, we are broadcasting this whole stream on channel 6, but it doesn't mean that it's actually going to come up as channel 6 in your set-top box. You'll get, you know, as an example, 24 for, for ABC News 24, uh, channel 1 for 1 HD. So we can do the same here. We can set a logical channel to 101, 102, and it doesn't have to be sequential. So I generally use numbers above 100 though because the broadcasters use numbers less than 100. You don't want any sort of um, conflicts there. So I'll update that. Yes. Um, let's see, the only other thing you may wish to keep in mind, oh, the NIT, NIT enable, it's best to leave that on. What that does is it just allows set-top boxes when it's doing a, a scan of the system to, to find all, the, all the, um, the streams inside your channel much faster than if it had to search through it manually, so it's always good to put that in there. The other thing is um, the, the transport stream ID. If you do have multiple cards of these, if you do have multiple digital modulators in your um, in your head end or in your system, uh, it's good. It's a good idea to have uh, multiple stream IDs. So, what you'll want to do to change this, if say this is the uh, say this is the first, the very first module, we'd leave this on one one. Uh, if this was the second modulator, we would change this to number two. So change to two, click on update. You'll see now we have two stream uh, two stream IDs here, so we remove the old one. Like that, so we're just left with network ID one, stream ID two. If we if this is the third one, so that went to number three and remove two. So that's it. For the time being, we'll turn that back to one. Because this is the only digital modulator we have in our rack. We're doing this basically so there aren't any conflicts so that these um, logical channel numbers do actually come up as a correct channel number. If you do do a scan and you find that some of your modules have the correct number but others don't, uh, it's usually because of, uh, because of this issue up here. So once we've done all this, once we've done all this, we've got the uh, 
output stream parameters set correctly. We also have the uh, selected uh, the, the different channels with their logical channel numbers. Just click save and run. All right, and that's it. So that's been saved. Those three streams are now mapped to their logical channel numbers. Everything's correct here, and we go back to home just to make sure there's nothing wrong. No errors. So we're good. So that's, um, yeah, it's that easy. It's uh, actually very powerful. Um, it's a very powerful platform for being able to set logical channel numbers as well as have multiple modulators in the same network. Uh, and once you've seen how to set the uh, set the parameters. It's uh, it's actually quite an easy system to set up. So, uh, good luck with setting up your head ends, and uh, I'll talk to you later.